Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, June 29th, coming to you live from Seoul. I'm Kim mo Before we begin, these are the stories we're following at the top of the hour. The South Korean government and members of the ruling Democratic Party decided to drop a second supplementary budget of roughly 29 billion U.S. dollars, the largest of its kind. The budget will be used to revive the nation's pandemic-hit economy. Latest research shows that mixing and matching COVID-19 vaccines developed by Pfizer and AstraZeneca helps generate a more robust immune response than receiving two AZ doses. And K-pop boy band BTS is once again on a record-breaking spree as BTS' number summer single Butter has topped the Billboard Hot 100 chart for the fifth week in a row. Our top story this morning, the ruling Democratic Party and the government met on Tuesday to come to an agreement on the second supplementary budget plan for this year. Finance Minister Hong Namgi said it will be the biggest supplementary budget in the country's history at more than 29.1 billion U.S. dollars. The budget will be used to help economic recovery from COVID-19 by supporting small business owners and boosting consumption. It will also focus on helping young people with employment, housing, living finances and starting their own businesses. The recipients of a fifth round of emergency handouts was also agreed on with those in the bottom 80 percent of income bracket receiving payments. South Korea has sharply hiked its economic forecast for this year and the next after factoring in potential record exports and a strong rebound in consumer spending. It cited rising vaccination levels and another supplementary budget as the reasons for its more optimistic outlook. Pilinzi with the details. South Korea's economy is projected to grow by 4.2 percent by the end of this year, an increase by another 3 percent in 2022. To achieve this level of economic growth, the finance ministry on Monday laid out its economic policy plan for the second half of this year. To boost spending, the government plans to offer six types of discount coupons in addition to the ones already distributed. These new types of coupons will be focused on businesses that were hit hard by the pandemic, including farming and fishery products, gyms, sports venues, the culture sector, movies, railways and buses. This will be done through the country's supplementary budget, the second of its kind so far this year. Though further details on this extra budget are yet to be revealed, the finance ministry said last week that it is going to allocate more than 26.5 billion U.S. dollars for the extra budget. The government will also give out cashback rewards for credit card spending. Each consumer can get back up to 300,000 Korean won, or about 265 U.S. dollars. This will also be done using the supplementary budget, and a total of about $885 million has been allocated for this cashback reward plan. For the credit card cashback plan, we have excluded purchases from department stores, large supermarkets and luxury brand shops. We hope this will boost spending at small businesses. To resume overseas travel, the government aims in July to set up a so-called travel bubble where people can travel between certain countries without the need for quarantine. As for the job market, the government aims to increase the number of people employed in 2021 by 250,000 and have another 250,000 more employed by the end of next year. To do this, it plans to create more than 150,000 new jobs within the second half of this year. It will also provide financial support in the fast-developing fields of AI and programming, as well as in the art, culture and travel industries, which have been struggling since the outbreak. And for small businesses, the government will pass a bill next month that will compensate them for losses caused by COVID-19. This includes businesses where operations were halted or restricted by the government's social distancing policies. Peunji, Arirang News. Now moving on to the COVID-19 situation in South Korea, the nation reported 595 new COVID-19 cases Tuesday, staying in the 500s for the second straight day. Of them, all but 35 were locally transmitted. Authorities are mulling over whether to strengthen virus prevention measures in the capital area ahead of July 1st when new social distancing measures come into effect. Meanwhile, more than 4.7 million people have been fully vaccinated in the country. South Korea is removing quarantine exemptions for countries like Indonesia where new COVID-19 cases are surging even if the rival has been fully vaccinated. The same rules now apply for India, Pakistan and the Philippines. 
The government says the countries were listed in consideration of the virus situation, as well as the number of variant cases brought in from those countries so far. This comes as South Korea agreed to lift 14-day quarantine for those who have been fully vaccinated by a WHO-approved vaccine and are visiting their immediate family or for humanitarian or academic purposes from July 1st. The UK on Monday reported over 22,000 new COVID-19 cases, the highest daily figure it has seen since late January. Tokyo is seeing a spike in cases too and making it all the more concerning. The surge comes on the eve of the Olympics. Yi reports. The Delta variant has wreaked havoc on the UK's plans to lift all its lockdown measures as it reported 22,868 new COVID-19 cases on Monday, the country's highest figure since late January. However, despite the high number of cases, the UK only reported three virus-related deaths. Scientists say the surge is due to the highly transmissible Delta variant, coupled with lockdown fatigue, a growing laxness when it comes to sticking to guidelines and the easing of restrictions. Now, many are questioning whether the uptick will further delay the lifting of lockdown measures, which have been set for July 19th. With just weeks to go until the opening ceremony of the Tokyo Olympics, the Japanese capital is seeing another surge. Tokyo reported 317 new COVID-19 cases on Monday, up 81 from the same day a week earlier. According to the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, the seven-day average in the city was 489, up 24 percent on week. The global resurgence has prompted a number of travel restrictions to be reimposed, including in Hong Kong. It says it's banning all passenger flights from the UK starting Thursday. Hong Kong's government says the UK has been classified as extremely high risk because of the recent rebound of the epidemic situation and the widespread Delta variant strain there. More than 95 percent of new COVID-19 cases in the UK are reported to be the Delta variant. Lee Seung-jae, Arirang News. As countries mull the cross inoculation of AstraZeneca and Pfizer vaccines, new research shows such a mix-and-match approach may result in stronger protection against the virus. Kim Hyo-san tells us more. Research shows that mixing and matching COVID-19 vaccines developed by Pfizer and AstraZeneca generates a more robust immune response than receiving two doses of the latter. This is according to a study led by Oxford University, which found that mixing produced high concentrations of antibodies against the COVID-19 spike protein. But we have shown that the mixed schedules do generate a good immune response. So if there were circumstances that meant that you needed to change things around or you needed flexibility, then I think our data are very reassuring that that would be OK. The data provides support for some European countries that have started offering alternative to AstraZeneca as a second shot after the AZ vaccine was linked to rare blood clots. The study conducted on 830 participants also showed the highest antibody response was seen in people who had two doses of Pfizer's vaccine. Separate research conducted at Washington University in St. Louis shows the vaccines made by Pfizer and Moderna may protect recipients against the novel coronavirus for years. The findings also show that people who were administered with the mRNA vaccines may not need a booster shot, assuming that the virus and variants do not mutate beyond their current forms. Saying the research is a good sign for the durability of people's immunity developed from vaccination, they add that people who've recovered from COVID-19 and have been vaccinated may not need booster shots going forward, even if the virus does mutate significantly. Kim Hyo-san. Arirang News. K-pop boy band BTS have continued to set new records. They've been on top of the Billboard Hot 100 chart for five weeks in a row, adding another impressive feat in their band's musical history. Kim Yeon-sin fills us in. K-pop boy band BTS is once again on a record-breaking spree. BTS's summer single, Butter, has topped the Billboard Hot 100 chart for the fifth week in a row. 
BTS have broken their own record with Butter, as the song has now surpassed the previous milestone held by Dynamite, another hit song from the band that had let the Hot 100 chart for a total of three weeks. But Butter's popularity continues to grow by the day. Data accumulated last week noted a 15% increase in the song's sales. In the last week alone, the number of downloads of the song totaled more than 128,000. And in each of the past five weeks, BTS's Butter has sold more than 100,000 downloads, the first song to do so since Ed Sheeran's Shape of You, which was released in 2017. Butter has also increased its radio presence, with the song growing 6% in radio airplay audience impressions, with 27.6 million points. BTS's feat with Butter is impressive all around. Billboard said on Monday that out of all the 54 songs in the history of Billboard that have topped the Hot 100 chart upon debuting, there were only 11 songs that spent the first five weeks at number one. And Butter is one of less than a dozen. Also, BTS are the first Asian artists to remain at the apex of the chart for more than four weeks. The previous record was set by a Japanese singer in 1963, whose song retained the number one spot for three weeks. BTS has now spent a total of 10 accumulative weeks at the top of the Hot 100 chart, with Butter, the fourth song, to help them gain this accolade. Kim Hyun-sung, Arirang News. South Korean screen manufacturer Samsung Display posted an all-time high sales figure for Samsung phone smartphone displays in the first quarter. Market researcher Om Dia says the company sold 138 million units in the first quarter, with sales reaching around 7 billion U.S. dollars. Both those figures are up nearly 50 percent on year. Experts attribute the strong performance to consumer spending what they had held back in previous quarters, as well as Samsung Display expanding its lineup of 5G models. China and Russia have renewed their 20-year-old friendship treaty following a video summit. During Monday's meeting, Chinese President Xi Jinping hailed their ties as a new type of international relations that adds positive energy to the international community. Russian President Vladimir Putin said their ties are at, quote, their highest point. The meeting came just two weeks after Putin met U.S. President Joe Biden in Geneva, but made little progress on issues like cybersecurity or human rights. And rescue teams are in a race against time to find survivors within the rubble of the collapsed building in Surfside, South Florida. The, the death toll has risen to 10, with rescuers pulling out one more dead body new early Monday local time. 151 people are still missing. It's been five days since the 12-story condo building collapsed into a pile of rubble in a matter of seconds. In retaliation to a series of sanctions imposed by the European Union, Belarus says it has decided to suspend its involvement in the Eastern Partnership. The initiative is aimed at strengthening ties between the regional bloc and its ex-Soviet neighbors. The Belarusian Foreign Ministry also said Monday that it will recall its envoy to the EU while ordering the EU representative in Minsk to leave the country. The announcement comes as the country's president denounced EU sanctions as part of a, quote, hybrid war waged by the West against <laughs> Belarus. Less than a month to go before the Tokyo Summer Games begin, South Korean athletes are making final preparations with their eyes set on ensuring the county a top 10 finish. Han sung woo went to hear from the Olympians, brimming with confidence. A top 10 finish and at least seven gold medals. On Monday at a Media Day event at the Chincheon National Training Center, South Korea's Olympic Committee vowed to do all it can to support its athletes on the mission ahead. Personally, I think we can actually win 10. For Korea to hit its Olympic target, its athletes need to win gold in sports the country has historically excelled in. Korean archers are aiming for a clean sweep of all five categories, including the newly added mixed team event. One name to watch out for is Kim jae -dok who could become the nation's youngest ever medal winner in men's archery at just 17. Reigning women's golf champion Park Bi, four-time shooting gold medalist Jin Jong-woo, 
and saber fencing's Osanguk are also favorites to take home the top prize. And in what may be his last Olympics, Taekwondo star Lee Dae-hoon has never been hungrier for gold, something that has so far eluded the world's number one featherweight. Meanwhile, Korean-Japanese judoka An Chang-nim seeks redemption in the country of his birth after a shocking early exit in Rio 2016. Perhaps attracting the most attention, though, is 18-year-old Hwang seon woo who's being touted as Korea's next great swimmer. With America's Caleb Dressel standing in the way, it'll be tough for Hwang to win gold in his main event, the 100-meter freestyle, but Tokyo is just part of the bigger picture. I haven't yet felt the tension the Olympics bring, but I'm willing to face it head on. The Paris and LA Olympics might need to be the priority. Table tennis prodigy Shin Yubin and gymnast Yeo so Jung, both teenagers, hope to shock the world as well. As for team sports, both football and baseball are on Korea's radar. Korea's baseball pride is at stake, so I hope we perform in a way that energizes the country. Back as baseball's head coach is Kim Gyeongmun, who led Korea to the gold medal in Beijing 13 years ago, the last time baseball was an official Olympic event. Han Sung-woo, Arirang News. Welcome. It's time for the world now, bringing you some of the most interesting news from around the globe. I'm Om ji It's been a tough time for artists around the world as they were restrained by virus restrictions. But with vaccine inoculation drives gaining steam and the gradual lifting of lockdowns, hope is returning. And as Paris slowly climbs out of lockdown, American and French street artists have gathered to project their optimism on a giant wall. For me, what, well, what me and Cruz decided was that uh, we wanted to make something really optimistic and something celebratory because after the tragic year everyone went through, we thought people could, it could help the community to lift their spirits a bit and give them some hope with a meaningful image. In mid-June, they started painting a 25-meter-high massive mural in the northeast of Paris. The mural, which the artists say is a symbol of creative rebirth and reconnection of cultures, is to be inaugurated on Saturday. What looks like a vending machine installed at a school in Ukraine is teaching students the joy of donations as, as well as helping the environment. It's a special recycling machine that trades plastic for money. With the money earned, students at a school in Kiev have been helping those in need. I dropped bottles into this machine and helped animals, children and elderly. After dropping a bottle into the machine, students can choose between providing food for stray animals, helping elderly people or children with special needs. In a bid to boost environmental awareness among younger generations, Ukraine plans to install more machines in schools nationwide. The project, which was started in October 2020, has gathered more than five tons of plastic from six machines. As search and rescue efforts continue at the site of the South Florida condo collapse, families of the missing are in need of emotional support. Tal and Molly, two therapy dogs, are there to help comfort the families and friends of the missing as they wait for news. So they can be able to touch in the dog, they can feel in the dog, they can be able to have that contact you know, with their eyes, that is very neat. Animals are absorbing everything emotional that they are feeling at the same time, and they can be able to be very relaxing for them. Bilingual staff from the disaster relief team is also working in English and Spanish to relieve people's stress and emotions at the site. The president of the team said they're ready to stay longer with those waiting on what might be agonizing news.
Good morning. A face mask and umbrella are a must on your way out these days, and today is no exception. Sudden showers with stormy conditions are on top for central regions and Jeollado provinces. And you know, when it starts to rain, it could pour, so please be cautious and stay aware as there could be significant flooding. Aside from the rain, air quality will be normal to good nationwide, while ozone levels could rise in parts of the south and west during the day today. Afternoon ratings will be in the upper 20s across Korea, while Jeju and East Coast regions will have sunny skies today. The expected monsoon season begins this Friday starting in Jeju. Southern provinces will also receive rain from Saturday. Well, actually, this year's monsoon season is the latest rainy season has started in 39 years. And for now, monsoon rain is forecast to fall in central regions at the end of next week. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the weather conditions around the world. That will do it for us at this hour on Arirang News. We'll be back at noon Korea time, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching and goodbye.